chapter 9 this morning. Luke chapter 9. I, I hope this message will be a help to you today. And you know, I don't, I don't preach anything mean for, you know, to be mean. I, I just want to preach the truth. I, some, and sometimes, you know, you got to bring up stuff that, I don't know, people might not necessarily like. And you might have to say some things that maybe people don't really want to hear. But you guys all know me well enough now to know anything I preach. Uh, you know, I preach because... You know, it's, it's from the Bible, and I do it in love. I, I, don't, I don't hate anyone here. And uh, Luke chapter 9, verse 57 says, And it came to pass that as they went in the way, a certain man said unto him, Lord, I will follow thee whithersoever thou goest. And Jesus said unto him, Foxes have holes, and the birds of the air have nests, but the Son of Man hath not where to lay his head. And he said unto another, Follow me. But he said, Lord, suffer me first to go and bury my father. Jesus said unto him, Let the dead bury the dead. But go thou and preach the kingdom of God. And another also said, Lord, I will follow thee, but let me first go bid them farewell, which are at home uh, at my house. And Jesus said unto him, No man having put his hand to the plow and looking back is fit for the kingdom of God. I think right here, and what Jesus is trying to show in this passage is that there is a price to pay for serving him. He tells this, you know, this one, uh, that first thing he mentions, you know, somebody says, I'll follow you wherever we go. And he's like, you know, I don't even have a place to lay my head. You know what he's trying to do? He's trying to tell them, it's not easy following me. Okay? You know, a lot of people are anxious to get on board with things. They're, I, mean, I want to serve God. I want to do something. But a lot of times people, they get the wrong idea that it's going to be a piece of cake. That if I start doing right, if I start serving God, everything is going to get easy in my life. And that's just not the case. And so then Jesus goes on and he's telling these people, he's, go, he's calling on them to follow him, but they kind of start making excuses. Well, I've got something I need to do first. And I think these excuses that people are giving are ones we would say pretty good excuses. I mean, the guy wants to go to his dad's funeral. That sounds like a pretty good excuse, doesn't it? But Jesus said, let the dead bury the dead. Wow, is he being unreasonable here? You know, what's going on? What's going on? You know, another one, hey, can I just say, Farewell to those that are in my house. And Jesus tells them, you know, no man having put his hand to the plow and looking back is fit for the kingdom of God. So Jesus is trying to show them there's a, there's a price to pay. And you know, what I'm, what I'm going to preach today, it, it would probably be too much to handle in most churches today. All right? I, and I said, I, I don't shoot for meanness. I don't try to be shocked or anything. But listen, when you start ta- make, talking about making sacrifices... And giving it all to the Lord, people often scream foul because, you know, we're saved by grace without works. And that is absolutely true. I believe that. But the thing that people forget is, you know, when when we're in church, we're preaching to save people, all right? Okay, listen, if I preach hard at you, take it as a compliment. It means I think you're saved, okay? So, you know, if I'm preaching easy, fluffy, stuff is probably because I don't think you're Satan. I don't think you can handle it. Or it means I think you're a baby Christian and you can only handle milk, all right? So if I preach something hard, it means I think you're tough. It means I think you're mature. It means I think you can handle some meat, all right? So just keep that in mind. And listen, it is, it's easy to get saved. It does not require any works to get saved. It's putting your faith and trust in Jesus Christ. But listen, if you're saved today, God wants you to be his servant. He wants that from you. God wants you to give him a life of service. Now, it's not something that you owe because salvation is free. But God has God has called us to service. God wants us to do that. And the problem with many people today is that they they come to church trying to figure out what is the bare minimum that I have to do. What is the bare minimum that is expected of me? What is the smallest amount of stuff I have to do to get to heaven. And you know, many times the only reason the people are even in church in the first place is they think this is going to help my chances of getting to heaven. I can't tell you how many people are sitting in churches today. They don't really want to be there, but it, they somehow they've got it in their mind. You know, I want to go to heaven. I hope I'm going to heaven. And, you know, going to church regularly will probably help my chances. Going to church regularly will not help your chances of getting into heaven. If you're not saved, you're not going to heaven. I don't care how much you go to church. Okay, what I'm talking about today has nothing to do with salvation. Salvation, it's easy. Salvation requires no works. But I'm here today to tell you, if you are saved, you have an opportunity. You have a calling on your life to serve God. And it is one that eternally speaking will benefit you greatly. 
You have, I mean, you have everything to gain from serving God, eternally speaking. In this world, there will be sacrifices. In this world, it will be difficult. In this world, you might have to do without some things. You might have to miss out on some things. But I'm telling you, when you get to heaven, you will never regret anything you did for the Lord. There will be zero regret. The only regret you will ever have is that you didn't do more. And so I'm telling you this out of love because you need to hear this. This is something that is it's good for you. It's going to benefit you. And, it's, and people today, they're, they're, they're in church for all the wrong reason. If you're coming to this church thinking this will help your chances of getting into heaven, you know what? You might as well go to the community fund center church. You might as well go to the Chuck E. Cheese church, you know, where they do all the fun stuff and have all, you know, have the water slide baptismals and things like that. You know, go to that place that puts on a good show. You might as well go get entertained. You might as well go to the ball game, okay? You have just as much chance of getting to heaven because you went to a ball game as you do from going to church. Going to church does not get anybody into heaven. Okay? And that's not, that is not why we're here. We are meeting here as believers because we want to serve God. We want to do something for God. We want to accomplish something. So you know what that means? That means we got to preach the hard stuff. That means we got to preach the whole counsel of God. We're going to preach the things that might make some people uncomfortable and might even make you uncomfortable. But we need to hear these things. And so a lot of people that are sitting in church, they, they, they want to serve God. They want to be used of God. But like these people in the Bible, they all have excuses. They feel like their circumstances gives them an exemption from something that God has called them to do. And the title of my message today is Exemption Denied. Okay? Now listen, we all know what exemptions are, right? You know, I've got, you know, a whole bunch of tax exemptions running around here, right? You know, that's what some people look at kids, you know, tax exemptions. You know, I'm not required uh, to pay as much taxes because I have all these exemptions called children. And so, you know, I don't have as big of a tax obligation. And you know what? I, I personally think our tax code is crooked. I think it's corrupt. I think it's dirty. But I will say this, it actually benefits me greatly. All right? <laughs> Now, I'd vote it out tomorrow if, if, I, if I had a chance, because it is. It's crooked, it's corrupt, it's wrong. I hate it. I think the IRS is evil. I, wish, I, I feel like preaching a whole sermon against them right now, but I'm not going to do that. But, uh, but we do. We know what an exemption is. And we're used to that in this country. And we somehow, we think, we, some people make up exemptions from the Bible. Now listen, you could find a lot of exemptions in the tax code. You could find a lot of exemptions from things that are maybe required in our government. But in the Bible, we don't see exemptions from serving God. But yet people have made them up. They make up all these exemptions for why they don't have to keep commands that everyone else is keeping. Now how is that fair? So it might work in America, but it doesn't work in the kingdom of God. And this attitude, it's very prevalent in America... Because our government, they always are given these exemptions for people that they feel need them. And this creates a problem because you know what? Everybody has challenges, don't they? Everybody has difficulties. And, you know, when you get, when you help out one group, what does it do? It causes another group to start demanding, hey, we want help too. You know, we want an exemption. You know, how dare you give tax cuts for the rich? You know, you need to give some to the poor too. You know, you give them to the poor. Hey, what about the middle class? And you, you know, you do anything for one person, they start calling to do it for everybody. And, you know, and while that happens in our goofed up, messed up country, it doesn't happen in the Word of God. But we've got all these American Baptists today that are sitting in churches and they are seeing the commands of the Bible. Hey, this is what's expected. This is what's required of you. God wants you to do this. And they decided, well, you know what? I declare myself exempt because I have this situation. And I'm going to show you that that, that is ridiculous. That is not biblical, but that's very American. And, you know, let's just face it. You know, we're all Americans here, all right? And I don't mean just because maybe we were born in this country as citizens, but the culture has rubbed off on us. And you know one and one thing we're all real good at too as Americans we're all real good at getting offended by everything. All right? And listen, don't get offended by anything I say. If you do, you're just acting like an American, all right? And I tell my kids whenever they get offended and start screaming not fair, you know, we call them millennials. Millennials get offended by everything. I mean, everything. They're always protesting something, or always you know, always complaining, always whining, and you know, and it's it's millennials are just more American than, than, you know, than the older generation. He said, we're going downhill. We're getting worse in this area. 
and our government's not helping. But you know, we, if, if you don't know what an exemption is, it just, the definition is freedom from any service, charge, burden, tax, evil, or requisition to which others are subject. Immunity, privilege. Uh, in many cities of Europe, uh, purchased or obtained exemptions from feudal servitude. No man can claim an exemption from pain, sorrow, or death. That's, that's the definition in the American. There are some things, yeah, you can't claim exemption from. And you know what? There's things that God has called us to do that there are no exemptions that you can claim. Now, you can yell about them all you want, but one of these days you're going to stand before Jesus and you're going to say, well, Lord, you know, I, I know you told me to do this, but I had this situation. I was exempt. And he's going to look at you like, what are you talking about? You know, show me in the code. All right, you know, where that exemption's at. It's not there. Okay? there it's, it's just not there. And we are, we are obsessed with everyone's special needs in this country. I mean, we literally have invented diseases, okay? Things that are just behavioral problems. Things that people have dealt with from the beginning of time. We have decided that these things are diseases. Because some psychiatrist told us they are. Some quack that, you know, is getting kickbacks from the pharmaceutical companies. He's get, he's named your just behavior issue some fancy term so you can feel like a victim and you can get on their medication and he can get rich off of you. That's what's going on in this country. That is our mentality today. You know, if a kid's hyper, oh, he's got ADHD. What we got, we got to drug him up. You know, that, if your kid's hyper, it just means he's healthy. You know, if your kid's hyper, it's probably because, you know, he, sits around playing video games all day, watching TV all day, and eventually he needs to burn off some steam. You know, he's probably hyper, maybe because of all the sugar and junk that you're shoving down his throat. You know, all the Mountain Dew you're feeding the kid. That's probably why he's hyper. He doesn't need any drugs. He doesn't need any pills. You know, we got people who have a temper. And what do we do? Instead of just saying, hey, control your temper. Well, I got bipolar. I'm schizophrenic or I'm whatever. And then they want to take medication for it. And then because you got declared to have some kind of disorder or something, you now are exempt from all the rules. You know, if you can't control yourself, if your kid can't behave, well, it's not his fault. He's got this or that. No, your kid needs to behave himself. He needs to be punished. He needs to be spanked. You know, and if you're an adult and you've, you've been diagnosed with one of these things, you can get away with things. We had a lady here one time. We had the food pantry. She got mad about something and she threw a can at somebody. And thankfully, she missed them. She didn't hit them. Brother, you were here that day. Yeah, he, he would, all the weird stuff would happen when they were here watching it. And I remember, it was funny, and I went, and I'm dropping the food off of these people, and they're all telling me all about it, and they're, yeah, well, she's, she's bipolar and schizophrenic, and, and, and she drinks. And if she hasn't had her medication, and she's been drinking, she loses her temper like, you know, you know this is why this happens. Well, listen, anybody who drinks is going to do things that they probably shouldn't do. Anybody who's having withdrawals from their medications is probably going to do some things they shouldn't have to do. Sounds like that lady just never learned how to control herself. I mean, who just goes and throws a can at somebody because they, they took the one that you wanted? I mean, that, that's just ridiculous. It's free food, people. Just be thankful for what you get. But no, we all, everybody's got all these disorders, these issues, and we're just supposed to deal with that. We were supposed to just let that lady keep coming back so she can keep throwing cans at people because it's not her fault. She's bipolar and schizophrenic. No, I said, she's not allowed to come back. Because, okay, maybe she's got an issue, but the rules still apply. No throwing cans at people. You can't do that. We, I told you about the guy who wanted to come here who gets in fights with people all the time. He can't help it. God understands. And I told him, I said, you can't get in fights with people. No, but you don't understand. I have this disorder. doesn't matter. Nobody in our church deserves to get beat up. You can't fight with anybody in our church. You're, and if you can't handle that, you are just not allowed to come. And, you know, and I was a terrible person because I don't understand his special needs. No, nobody's exempt, okay? You're not allowed to go around punching people. You're not allowed to just go around cussing people out. I don't care what a doctor has told you you have. The same rules apply to everybody. Our government might let you get away with that, but here we're not going to. Here we follow rules. Nobody's allowed to hit each other here. All right, it's, you're not allowed to do that, brothers and sisters. You can if your parents don't mind, but you know, but but your parents probably aren't. Gonna, yeah, <laughs> they're not going to have that rule either. They're probably they're probably going to give you a spanking for it. And so, you know, all these things. You know, it, it's to the point now where they're making rules in some places. They're making laws 
that if you don't call somebody by their gender preferred pronoun, you can get in big trouble for that. You know, you don't, you know, instead of just saying, you know, the person is an abomination. You know, the Bible says, you know, uh, a woman shall not wear that which pertains unto man, neither shall a man put on a woman's garment. For all that do so are an abomination. It is not an abomination. They are an abomination. And instead of calling them an abomination, what do we do in the country today? We've invented a fancy name for it. Oh, it's not their fault. They have gender dysphoria. No. They're perverts. And, you no, know, and you don't understand. You know, you need to call him her. You know, if Jimmy wants to be called Jamie, you got, you got to call him that. I mean, and a school teacher, they get fired. If they didn't do it, or if they just accidentally called, you know, said, you know, called him a him instead of a her, whatever they wanted, they could get in a lot of trouble. That's ridiculous. But that is our country. And this is all marks of a society that's going down the toilet. And it's one thing for this to be going on in our country, but it's another thing if it's going on in the church. It's another thing if we've got people in church constantly claiming exemption from just common sense because of whatever issue. They have, and there are some things that no one is exempt from. And I just want to show you a few things. I'm just, kind of, I'm just kind of ranting on some of these things. But you'll listen. Exemption denied. Okay, your exemptions are denied. We don't recognize exemptions here in this church. Romans chapter one, verse eighteen. Turn over there. Nobody is exempt from morality. Everyone is supposed to be moral. You know, it's and it's amazing. You know, people they often will justify wickedness. Because, well, it's their culture. You know, in their culture, they don't get married. Or in their culture, they do. The, listen, morals are morals. Okay, God's word tells us what they are. And look what it says in Romans 1.18. It says, For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who hold the, truth of, uh, hold the truth in unrighteousness, because that which may be known of God is manifest in them, for God has showed it unto them. For the invisible things of Him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even as eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. You can see these things. There's common sense. Things just from nature that we can see. God has revealed just certain things when it comes to moral and right and wrong. Everyone knows it. It shouldn't matter what culture they're from, what part of the world. But listen, some people have rejected it. Some people have just hated it. And it says in verse 21, because that when they knew God, they glorified Him not as God, Neither were thankful, but became vain in their imaginations, and their foolish heart was darkened. Professing themselves to be wise, they became fools and changed the glory of the uncorruptible God into an image made like unto corruptible man and to birds and four-footed beasts and creeping things. What did they do? They just made God what they wanted Him to be. That's why we have all these false gods out there. That's why we have all this idolatry out there. At one time, these people knew who God was, but you know what? They didn't like what He was, and so they said, you know what? Let's change Him into something else. Let's change them into something that we like. Something that goes along with what we want. And as a result of that, they profess themselves to be wise, but the Bible says they became fools. They didn't start out as fools, but they became that way. Verse 24, Because of that, wherefore God also gave them up to uncleanness through the lust of their own hearts to dishonor their own bodies between themselves. Why do you think some of these cultures, they pierce themselves all over the place, they stretch their ears out, they stretch their necks, I mean, they tattoo themselves all over the place. Why do you think they do that? Because God gave them up to uncleanness to dishonor their own bodies. These are not a marks you know, of a beautiful, wonderful culture that's just different. No, that is the mark of a culture that has rejected God. And they've been given over to vile affections. And that's what's going on in this country. And a lot of the same kind of craziness that people used to see in National Geographic, we are now seeing in this country. How often do you see the stretched out ear thing? Where did that come from? Well, they've been doing that in Africa for years. But that's because they rejected God a long time ago. And they've been given up to these things. And now we're doing those things. AIDS is running rampant in Africa. All kinds of horrible diseases. Now it's starting to go on in this country. Why is, why is it worse over there? They rejected God long before we did. But now as we are rejecting God, the same kind of thing is going on. Verse 26, for this cause, God gave them up 
unto vile affections. For even their women did change the natural use into that which is against nature. And likewise also the men leaving the natural use of the woman burned in their lust one toward another. The men with men working that which is unseemly and receiving in themselves the recompense of their heir, which was meat. And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a reprobate mind to do those things which are not convenient. All the perversion that's going on, the homosexuality, all those things, that is a result of a society that has rejected God and God has given these people up to those things and so they will be punished. So they will suffer. That is, you know, AIDS, they figured it out what it was, I think, in the 90s. But you know what? Diseases have always been around. The Bible said way back in the Old Testament, talking about the Sodomites, that the land itself vomiteth out the inhabitants. And you know what? This type of thing, that type of culture, an immoral culture, especially a sexually immoral culture, has always been one that has suffered great disease, great hardships, one thing after another. It has gone on for years because you know what? Even if it is their culture, morals are morals. And I listen, I believe God expects more from us than He does from people in other countries. I absolutely do believe that. But listen, how are things going in those countries that have no morals? It's not going well. When you stop and think about it, you have to come to the conclusion that God has not given them an exemption. It says in Psalms 19, or in Psalms 9, the wicked shall be turned into hell and all the nations that forget God. Right. Yes, I do believe it's worse when we do wickedness in America. I believe it's it's wick, more wicked when we are you know living in fornication than it is in some of those other countries. But listen, they are not getting away with it. Those cultures are going down the toilet greatly. Why do you think we've got to go over there and dig wells for those people all the time? Because their culture is so bad they can't even dig a well for themselves. Why is it that you know we got all these churches? They're always taking these mission trips over there. They don't preach in the gospel, but you know they just you know feed them soup. They you know dig a well. They build a house. Why can't those people do those things? You know why? Because they their culture has gone down the toilet because they have rejected God and they are suffering greatly for it. You know why? Because God has not recognized their exemption from morality, and as long as they remain immoral, their countries will always suffer. Oh, we say, oh, it's just because of the climate over there. You know, it's because of this, because of that. No, all those things is because they have rejected God. And it will happen in this country too if we're not careful. And so I do. I believe God expects more from us. But it's not going good in those countries. And you know, your, your current financial ex state is no excuse for fornication and adultery. You know how many people won't get married? They're shacking up and they won't get married. Well, we can't afford it right now. Why? Well, well I want to buy her an engagement ring. Where in the Bible does it say you have to have an engagement ring? You know what? You need, you need to do the right thing. You need to separate or you need to get married. Okay? There's no excuse. Oh, well, if we do that, it's going to hurt us on our taxes. And yes, it will. It will hurt you on your taxes. If you've got two single people living together and they're both making a certain amount of, you know, a low amount of money, you know, you won't get hurt that bad on taxes. But if you get married, it will affect your taxes and you're going to have to pay more. That's not right. That's not fair. That's a bunch of garbage. But you know what? It's no excuse for you to live an immoral life. There is no excuse for that. You don't get an exemption because of your financial situation. Morals are morals. You need to do the right thing. There is no excuse. Fornication is never, ever acceptable. Ever. There is no excuse for it. No one is exempt. No one is exempt from paying their vows. You know, we shouldn't have to talk about things like this, but unfortunately, church, you know, Christians are no better in many cases. You know, you need to pay your bills. You need to pay them on time. You need to pay your vows. Turn over to Deuteronomy 23, verse 21. I'll read a few verses real quick. It says, When thou shalt vow a vow unto the Lord thy God, thou shalt not slack to pay it. For the Lord thy God will surely require it of thee, and it would be sin in thee. But if thou shalt forbear to vow, then it shall be no sin in thee. That which is gone out of thy lips, thou shalt keep and perform even a free will offering according as thou hast vowed unto the Lord thy God, which thou hast promised with thy mouth. Now this here is talking specifically about giving to God, but let's, do you think God doesn't want us keeping our vows with Him, but He doesn't care if we break our vows with other people? Listen, when you signed up with the cable company, you agreed to pay, you know, $6 zillion a month, you know, so you could 
plop your lazy behind on the couch and watch TV all day and work even less and have more financial problems. Listen, if you made that vow with them, you need to pay it. And you need to pay it on time. And if you don't, you sin. Well, you know, I, I, I can't help it. I'm, I'm going. You sinned. You made the promise. You said you'd do it. You made the agreement with the bank. You made the agreement with the mortgage company. You made the agreement with the credit card company. And it's amazing how many Christian people, they could care less about all the agreements that they've made, all the things they've signed, and they won't pay their bills, and they wonder why God's not blessing them. They wonder why things aren't going good in their life. They, w- they won't even give. They won't, you know, they, they can't be a, you know, they, oh, I can't be a blessing. I, I can't give. You know, I have this financial problem. I have that financial problem. So you've just declared exempt. You've just been declared yourself exempt from paying your vows. You just declared yourself exempt from keeping your promise. Why? Well, oh, I got sick and missed a day at work and my paycheck wasn't enough. Well, why is that somebody else's problem? That's your problem. You know, maybe you shouldn't have made the promise. Maybe you shouldn't have made the vow. It says, if thou forbear to vow, it shall be no sin in thee. Did somebody force you to sign up for that cell phone? Did somebody force you to sign up for that cable? Did you, were you forced at gunpoint to sign up for that credit card? No, you weren't. Ecclesiastes 5.1 says, Keep thy foot when thou goest in the house of God, and be more ready to hear than to give the sacrifice of fools. For they consider not that they do evil... Be not rash with thy mouth, and let not thine heart be hasty to utter anything before God, for God is is in heaven, and thou upon the earth. Therefore let thy words be few, for a dream cometh through the multitude of business, and fools' voices known by multitude of words. When thou vowest a vow unto God, defer not to pay it, for he hath no pleasure in fools. Pay that which thou hast vowed. The Bible says you're a fool if you're not doing it. Pay it. Better is it that thou shouldst not vow then that thou shouldst vow and not pay, suffer not thy mouth to cause thy flesh to sin, neither say thou before the angel, it was an error. Oh, I, I didn't mean to. It was a mistake. I didn't know what I was getting myself in. Don't do that. You know what he's saying? Hey, there's no excuse. Don't be making excuses. You know what? Just keep your mouth shut. Don't make any promises. Don't make any agreements. Don't sign up for anything. And then you don't have to worry about breaking your promise because it's a big deal when you break your promise. God hates it. How would we like if He breaks, broke some of His promises to us? What if He broke the promise about keeping us saved? You know, what, what, you know, thank God He doesn't break promises. But you know what? We are His children. He wants us to be like Him. And He doesn't break His promises. And we shouldn't break our promises. But we declare ourselves exempt all the time for the most foolish things in the world. Psalms 15.4 says, In whose eyes a vile person is contemned, but he honoreth them that fear the Lord, he that sweareth to his own hurt and changeth not. Y'all see that? Swearing to your own hurt. I'm going to keep this promise even if it hurts me. And I'm not going to change on it. I might have to sell my truck in order to keep my promise. That's going to hurt. But you know what? I'd rather hurt myself than hurt somebody else that I made a promise to. That's called character right there. That's what God wants from us, but we do. We declare ourselves exempt all the time. Yeah, I know I made that promise, but sorry, I can't do that. Because whatever. And that, my friends, is not what a Christian should do. Proverbs 22, 13 says, The slothful man saith, There is a lion without, I shall be slain in the streets. You know, many people, have, they've declared themselves exempt from working. The Bible says, Six days shalt thou labor and do all thy work. Now listen, I... There are, you can physically become completely disabled. You know, there are, you know, you can get, you know, old. You know, you, there, are, there are some things that are, are legit. But you know what? Most of these people are just lazy today. That have declared themselves exempt from working. You know how many people I've met that are getting disability for mental reasons? For mental reasons. I've talked to these people. They're intelligent people. You know, they could, you know, punch numbers into a cash register. You know, there's a lot of things they could do. Oh, but no, I, I get stressed. You know, I, I, I get stressed real easy. And, and I forgot what the word is they use for that. It sounds way better than just stressed. Because we're all stressed out, right? You know, it's just part of being American. You know, they, all, they have all these great things. Uh, I can't work because of this. I can't work because of that. I'm exempt because of this. Listen, there are people who find things to do. I knew a guy, both of his parents were blind. And you know what they did? They both got a job as telemarketers. Okay? 
You don't have to be able to see to be a telemarketer. They figured out, hey, this is something we could do. We can call people on the phone. That's just talking. You just have to be able to hear and speak, and they can do that. And they, they found something to do. There's people all over that are disabled, have severe disabilities, but they're doing something. And then you've got other able-bodied people out there sitting around. You know, they're, they're strong enough mentally they can play plenty of video games. You know, they're keeping up with all the television shows pretty good, but they're not doing any work because they've declared themselves exempt because they all have an excuse. And the slothful man says, there's a line with that. I'll be slain in the street. I'll get killed if I do that. Oh, I can't do that. I can't stand for long periods of time. It hurts my legs. Yeah, it hurts all our legs. Oh, you know, I, get, I get really tired. I can't get up early in the morning. You know, sometimes you just have to make yourself do these things. It's amazing the things that we all have just learned to overcome and deal with, how many people have been defeated by those things. And they have declared themselves disabled or whatever, and there are people all over doing normal things, living normal lives with sometimes things that are worse. You know, what's the difference? One has character, one doesn't. And God's people ought to have character. The slothful man saith, there's a lion in the way, a lion is in the streets. Proverbs 19.24, a slothful man hideth his hand in his bosom, and will not so much as bring it to his mouth again. Why is he doing that? He's, he's faking a disability. I don't want to feed myself. I want somebody to feed me. And so he acts like he can't do anything. Proverbs 26, 15, The soft will hide his hand in his bosom. It grieveth him to bring it again to his mouth. I don't want to be responsible for myself. That's a lot of stress. Well, you know, you just got to deal with it. That's life. You know, unfortunately, we don't let anybody get hungry in this country. Hunger is a great motivator. Hunger motivates you to get out there and do something and accomplish something and work. But people, they've just declared themselves exempt. People, they've declared themselves exempt from spiritual things. Soul winning. Yeah, God's commanded us to go into all the world and give the gospel. God's commanded us to do that. Proverbs 11.30 says, The fruit of righteousness is a tree of life, and he that winneth souls is wise. John 15, 6, 8. Herein is my Father glorified that ye bear much fruit, so shall ye be my disciple. Verse 16, ye have not chosen me, but I have chosen you and ordained you that ye should go and bring forth fruit and that your fruit should remain that whatsoever ye shall ask of the Father in my name, he may give it you. Listen, the way we bear fruit as a Christian is we win people to Christ. God has called us to do that, but many people said, well, I'm exempt because I get nervous talking to people. Where's the exemption in the Bible? If you're nervous, you don't have to do that. You know, well, I, I, I'm not good at talking to people. Where does it say you have to be good at it? You know, where, where's the exemptions in the Bible? They're just not there, but people have declared themselves, you know, I don't have time. As though there are less than 24 hours in the day for you when there is for everybody else. Listen, we all have the same amount of time. Some of us just choose to use it differently than others. Some choose to fulfill our priorities. Some choose to fulfill God's priorities. That's the only difference. You have the same amount of time in the week that I do. You will all wait the exact same amount of hours for the next church service that I will. We're all on the same clock, folks. So you can't say you don't have time. But people are doing that. I'm nervous. I don't like it. Where does it say you have to like it in the Bible? It's just not there. Giving is another one. 1 Corinthians 9, 9, For it is written in the law of Moses, Thou shalt not muzzle the mouth of the ox that treadeth out the corn. Doth God take care for oxen? Or saith he it all together for our sakes? For our sakes, no doubt, this is written, that he which ploweth should plow in hope, and that he that thresheth in hope should be partaker of this hope. If we have sown unto you spiritual things, is it a great thing if we shall reap your carnal things? If others be partakers of this power over you, are not we rather? Nevertheless, we have not used this power, but suffer all things lest we should hinder the gospel of Christ. Now, I've preached on this before. What Paul's saying here is if someone ministers to you in spiritual things, they have a right to reap your carnal things. In other words, your money. Okay? If you go over to Brother Gomer's lawnmower shop and he fixes your lawnmower, you owe him money for him doing that service to you. And you know what? If he wanted to, he can send you a bill. And you would be required to pay that. He has every right to do that because he did a service for you. And Paul here, he's teaching, we don't use that power because it would hinder the gospel. We don't send people bills for what we do. But if you are being ministered to in the spiritual things of this church, then you owe 
your carnal things. You should be giving. I didn't say that. God said that. Okay, I'm the one plowing. I'm plowing in hope, hoping that I can start reaping from this. Hoping I could, you know, I'd rather plow here than plow at Walmart. I mean, you know, I, you know, I feel, I feel like I'm accomplishing something when I preach. I feel like I'm accomplishing something when I'm out giving the gospel out, when I'm studying my Bible. When I'm just stacking boxes on a pallet, I don't feel great about that. I had a guy come up to me one day and he's like, hey, you know, I, this is great what you guys are doing. I mean, you're helping put food on people's plates. I mean, this is this is great. You know, this you know this is a, this is a great occupation. He's just telling me all this stuff, and I'm just, all right, thanks. <laughs> I I'd rather be I'd rather be giving the gospel out. I'd rather be dishing out the spiritual food. That's what I would rather do. You know, most of, a lot of what I do, I spent one whole day this week pretty much stacking boxes of juice. And you know what? I do that some days and it's just boxes of juice and they're heavy. And I'm like, you know what? Whatever happened to drinking water? <laughs> and maybe I should be thankful because if y'all didn't drink juice then I wouldn't have a job. But there's been days like, man, people need to drink more water. I'm, I'm sick of stacking all this juice. But I don't know where I was going with that. But listen, you do. I, I, I'm, I'm plowing in hope, but if you all have exempted yourself from your tithes and offerings, then you know what? I'm working for you for free. And, and, and I'll do it, but I shouldn't have to. It's, it's, not, it's, not, it's not easy. You know, I got six kids. You know, I want to I wanna live a normal life. I want to I do certain things. I wish I could do more stuff for people. I, I wish I had more time for visits and things like that. But you know what? Now, I'm just going to get on to you right now. But let me tell you all, Y'all are skimping around here, all right? And it's not helping the cause out a whole lot, all right? Listen, sometimes we got to sacrifice a little bit. I'm sacrificing, all right? I'm just going to tell you right now. I'm trying to lead by example, okay? I'm, st- I'm trying to work the extra hours out there and not let it affect what I'm doing here. But you know what? Like you, I've only, there's only so many hours in the day. And unfortunately, that other job, it zaps me physically, and it's not always easy, all right? Now, I'm not trying to cry or nothing, okay? But listen, you can't just declare yourself exempt. You can't do that. There's no place in the Bible that says that. Well, you know, you don't understand. No, you show me your exemption in the Bible and we'll, we'll listen to what you have to say. But we need your help in this, okay? We want to give the gospel out to more people. I want to be able to preach good stuff to you. I don't want to be recycling my messages and preaching the same stuff over and over again. But I've got to study in the Bible. I want to be able to labor in the Word, and that takes time. Okay, I've listened to the message. You can tell it just got thrown together. Is that what you want? Do you just want me to get up here and just wing it every week and just spend most of my time guilt-tripping you into not coming back to church? But you don't want to come to church because the preaching is so stinking boring because it's the same thing I preached last week and the week before that and the week before that. Well, folks, I need the time to do some study. And you know what? The government's not going to pay me for it. Walmart is, when I'm out there on the clock, they're not going to let me study out there. They want me to stack boxes. They're not going to do that. The people in this world, you know, the archdiocese of the Baptist church isn't going to pay me for it because we don't have one. We're independent. You know, if anybody's going to do it, it's got to be you. Well, we can only do so much. We need more people. Well, that's where you get out and you do some recruiting. That's where you get out and you do some soul winning. And then, if we have more people, it's not as difficult. But if you all keep declaring yourself exempt from these things that are just normal Christian things, well then, get ready for some recycled milk. That's what you're going to get around here. You know? Don't be mad when I'm not coming by and visiting maybe as much as I used to. Okay, if I don't feed my family, I've denied the faith and I'm worse than an infidel. And it's going to get done one way or the other. I'd rather do it through here, but I, I can't do it by myself. Unfortunately, I wasn't the greatest student in the world in school. I'm not smart enough where I'm able to get a good enough job where I can pay the bills of my family and the church. I have to have your help. I wish I could do that. I wish I was smart enough I could, I could make money enough where I could take care of my family and take care of the church. But you know what? I'm not that, I just, I, don't, 
I goofed off in school too much, and now I'm paying the consequences, all right? But you know what? Y'all can help me out there, all right? I'm, I'm trying, but don't declare yourself exempt. And I'm just going to tell you this right now, too. I've been in the ministry for a long time, and this is just a fact, and you can ask pastor after pastor, and they're going to tell you the same thing. You know, those who ask the most are usually the ones who give the least. Those who demand the most, those who complain the most are usually the ones who give the least. It's just the way it is. It's not right, but... And you know what? And they'll say this too. Those who give the most are usually the ones who ask the least. They're the ones who complain the least. Those who don't give are usually the ones struggling financially. Oh, well, that's, that, you know, that's because those who are giving can because everything's going good. I'm not giving because I'm struggling. No, listen. You're struggling because you, the reason you have the financial problem you're struggling is because you have a character problem. You don't give because you have a character problem. And if you have a character problem, you're going to struggle financial, you know, financially. These are character issues, folks, because people have just declared themselves exempt from human decency. They've declared themselves exempt from morality. They've declared themselves exempt from the spiritual things and from the biblical commandments. And you are not exempt. The same thing that you have not been granted privilege by God where you don't have to do those things. I'd love to be one of those people that gets diplomatic immunity. You know, in countries, and you can just kind of get away with stuff. You kind of get away with murder. And it's like, we think, we think that's what we are. I'm immune from these things. You know, people too, they'll, they'll listen to this kind of preaching, and they're as guilty as everyone else. No, amen. And yeah, yeah, get, you know. It's like, hey, you're not doing it either. <laughs> yeah, but I, I've got this. You, you declared yourself immune, you know, giving yourself immunity. It's ridiculous. It's not right. Faithfulness. The Bible says, he that is faithful in that which is least, is faithful also and much, and he that is unjust in least is unjust and much. Faithfulness. You've got to be faithful. It's you know, and, and I you know, I'm I'm not I'm not trying to I pick on people. Listen, I do, I appreciate the faithfulness that I see, but uh you know it sometimes I'm afraid, you know, I I'm said I'm I'm not a mean person. This is probably one of the meanest messages I've preached in a long time. I, I'm not a mean person, but you know, I'm afraid that we are lowering the bar on what faithfulness is. If I'm not guilt tripping, if I'm not, you know, screaming and foaming at the mouth every week, you know, it's like we forget about it. Out of sight, out of mind. But you know, I don't want to have to do that. You know, I'm glad I'm not screaming at my wife every week, you know, you need to be faithful to me. You know, you need, you know, you need you can't be cheating on me all the time. I'm glad we're not having that conversation all the time. You know, we I, we don't talk about that. I have I, I don't even, I haven't even brought that up. I haven't told, you know, demanded it. It's just, she made a vow when we got married, and she's been keeping it. And I'm thankful for that. And I'm glad I don't have to remind her of it all the time. And when I do have to start reminding her all the time, things aren't going good. And I don't want to have to be talking about these things all the time. I don't want to have to be getting on to our church. But listen, this, we are a church. We are a body of believers. There's a, there's a lot of us, and we've all got to do our part. And if we're all declaring ourselves exempt for these lame excuses, it's going to get ugly. Things aren't going to be going good. The, the bickering, the complaining starts. I start getting a little nasty. I'm yelling at you about things I shouldn't even need to be yelling at you for. I don't want that to happen. I just wanted to remind you all that when it comes to these things, there's many other things we could have talked about that your exemption has been denied. Not by me. Okay? By the Word of God. You are, you are not exempt from these things. You are going to stand before the judgment seat of Christ. You are going to give an account for the things done in your body. And what, there is not going to be a form that you fill out marking your exemptions like on the, you know, your 1040. You get through at the IRS. Well, you know, Lord, I had six kids. And so I gave myself a 6% deduction from the tithe. I only did 4%. You know, where did God say we get to do that? That's not in the Bible. The IRS might let you do that stuff, but God doesn't. And so we've got to understand as Christians, we are overcomers. We all have challenges. Well, what, what if I have this challenge in my life? You know what? That just means it's going to be a little harder for you. Well, I got, I got a temper. Well, that means it's going to be harder for you to behave. 
You just, it's gonna, it's gonna be harder. First John 5, 4, for whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world. And this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. Who is he that overcometh the world? But he that believeth that Jesus is the Son of God. We overcame the world by our faith in Jesus Christ. When we put our faith and trust in him, we overcame. And as Christians, we are overcomers. And if you have faith, you can do right even when things are difficult. Doing right is going to be more difficult for some than others, but you're still required. You're not exempt. If you have, and if you have faith, nothing's going to stop you from doing the right thing. And if your disability or your handicap is legit, you know what that just means? That means you'll get a greater reward. If it is that much harder for you to get to church than it is for me, God knows it. He didn't give you an exemption, but if you come through and you're faithful, I believe your reward will be greater. So understand if you, what you ha- the things you have in your life are challenges, just overcome them. God will help you do that. Uh, I'm scared. I got this phobia. You know, I looked it up 68 times. The Bible says, fear not. 28 times it says, be not afraid. And that's not just, you know, peace and all these, all these different ways. God was constantly telling us, don't be afraid. Why? Because we are afraid. He knows we have fears. But you know when he's saying, don't be afraid? Oh, I can't help it. I have this fear. You know what he's saying? Just don't let it stop you. Do it anyway. Oh, you know, I'm sorry. I'm going to have to deny Christ because I have a fear. You know, what if the early Christians have been like, I'm going to deny Christ because I have a fear of lions and getting eaten by them. Who doesn't have a fear of getting eaten by a lion? All right. I'm scared even at the zoo sometimes. I'm always checking. Can they get out? But you know what? God didn't give those people an exemption from denying Christ. There is there is none. Yeah. And they cost in their life. They died. But you know what? Their reward is great in heaven. And you do. Some of y'all, you have challenges and you're doing the right thing. And you know what? I admire that. I'm, I'm impressed. And God sees it. And you're going to be rewarded for it. He's going to take care of you in heaven. But don't fall for this thing that you are exempt. If you do, if you declare yourself exempt, God will not recognize it and you will regret it one day. And, I, and so I hope, I hope this was a help to you. I hope it came across in the right spirit. But your exemptions have been denied. And you need to just do the right thing and figure out how to do it. And so with that, let's all stand together.